Hello, Math Ninja here. From a quarter of geometry, I finally return to analysis. And today, we're going to start off with talking about the new subject, functional analysis. So functional analysis is a topic that studies infinite dimensional vector spaces or linear spaces. Well, vector space is the more commonly known name. I call it linear space because it, it sounds it has proper linear, which is nice. Linear is good property, but never mind. But it's the study of infinite dimensional vector spaces, and particularly function no, function spaces. For example, the space of a measurable function, the space of continuous functions defined in zero one, things like that. The space of piecewise continuous functions, ah, uh, the fun functions. So that is what we'll be studying, what I'll be doing lectures on for the remaining of this quarter. And also maybe a few things about uh, modern algebra. But that is on the side. That's, but this quarter, my goal is to get a real good grasp on analysis. So I'll be lecturing on it. So as I was talking about, first thing that we study in functional analysis is vector space, aka linear space. So first thing, a vector space should be closed under addition and scalar multiplication. So, in other words, if x and y are in the vector space, x plus y are in the vector space. Also, if this is a complex vector space, then it should be closed under scalar multiplication with lambda in the complex field. So if x is in the set, then lambda times x, where lambda is a, a complex number, should be in the, sp in the vector space. If it's a real vector space, then lambda has to be in the reals. So in general, given the vector of given a field of, for lambda, and it's closed under scalar multiplication in that field, then this is the field vector space, name of the field. So real, real lambda, real vector space, complex lambda, complex vector space. So there's a bunch more properties with um, vector spaces that has to fill the usual algebraic properties. For example, there exists a zero vector in the space, uh, distributive law holds, associativity holds, distributive over the multiplication, distributive, um, the addition over the multiplication, all these laws. There's like 10 of them, I believe, maybe eight. If you want to read them, go ahead and read them. Yeah, for the, but it's a very quick check. But the real main things, in my opinion, that is the difficult, most difficult to prove would be the first two. Close under addition, close under scalar multiplication. I remember, actually, uh, on this week's homework problem set, I had to prove that the in uh, L2R, the space of function of space of sequences defined where each element in R in that are square summable, meaning the squares of the sum the sum of the squares of each element in the sequence is less than infinity, meaning finite sum. Showing that it's uh, the sum of those two two elements in that sequence is still two elements in that space is still in that space. I remember having you use a uh, the, the arithmetic uh, it's interesting it was a little bit difficult to prove well not difficult but oh, that's, oh actually 10 second proof napkin proof ah never mind I digress again ah, I have not done this for a while okay so that's a vector space now before we are talking about metric spaces in when I was talking about the last quarter, when I was talking about the or two quarters ago. Well now we have something called norm spaces and inner product spaces. Well first I should say what an inner product is. Inner product X comma Y takes two functions, two two elements, X comma Y, in the vector space V and spits out a real number. Now this real number, actually, it can be a complex number. I apologize. It, it actually can be in the field, but for now, let's restrict it for real, oh, let's just say complex number. People are gonna say, 
some stuff. But just a mixer. Oh, I should get the. Uh, I should be able to do this. Very soon. Okay. Well, let's say in the real case first, for inner product. So given a vector space, an inner product defined on that space has to fulfill three properties. One of them is symmetry. And remember, this is real. It's only the first property differs in the complex case. So symmetry has to mean x comma y, inner product x and y equals inner products y x. Secondly, linearity must hold. Mean for lambda comma mu in R. Lambda x plus mu y comma, uh, let's make a new one, z. Mu y comma z equals lambda, or absolute value of lambda, is that right? No, that no, was not absolute value. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the norms. This is not problem. Uh, lambda of x comma y no 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 this is there's a z comma z comma z plus mu of y comma z lastly lastly we must have non-negativity hold mean for any x in v we must have x comma x be greater than or equal to zero, and equal and the x comma x equals zero, if and only if x equals zero. So these are three properties for the inner product. Now there's something. We can also, on a vector space, we can also define a norm. So, a norm. Oh, by the way, oh, right, I forgot to say. In the complex case of an inner product, the second and third property, the linearity property still holds, non negativity still holds. But one last thing we need. Different in a complex case. We need to be the inner product of x and y is equal to the conjugate of y x. Important property. So this means if we put lambda in the second variable. This means using the second property and the, and the first property, this actually means lambda x comma y with a conjugate on top. Important distinction, you will use it in many proofs. Okay, let's get a pause right here.